Hello, hello. Today we're playing another 10 plus 0 game. But uh, apparently the opponent already aborted the game. How unfortunate. Luckily for us, there are 18,000 people connected to leeches at the same time. So we are very likely to find a new opponent. But he decided to abort once again. What's up with this guy? So as you might have seen in the couple of seconds that the board was on, we've managed to get to 22,000. Yes, yes. Very big achievement. But we're only only in the middle of the way to achieving 2,600. So we have a new opponent, Danilo, 65, 1976, which plays the first move G4. So I really cannot resist playing this game. How many times do I have the chance to face the first move pawn to g4? I think like one out, one out of 1000 games. And if, he, and if that was not enough, he now played his pawn to e4. Jesus. I really lost track of everything which is happening on the board. The move e4 looks very bad to me like... Now he's left with a permanent weakness on the f square, f4 square. If I manage to get my knight on this square, it would be terrific. But for now, I'm thinking just how to finish my development in a good way. Bishop c5 comes to mind. Let's play bishop c5. Why not? With the idea to develop this way. I really would like to put my knight on e7 and then on g6. To keep the possibilities of jumping to these two juicy squares for the night. So this guy is definitely playing funky. But you know, it might backfire. I really don't feel like a move like g4 should scare anybody. c3. Jesus, it almost seems like he's trying to find the most un unpredictable move in each given position. That's how it feels to me at least. But White is wasting so much time in moving pawns rather than developing pieces that I, I really feel like I should punish him somehow, try to create some concrete problems for him. Let's see, so knight f6 is too easy of a move not to make. Maybe I could also play the pawn to h5 first. Maybe that, that would be in a logical idea. To me it seems like white played so many strange moves starting from e4 on the fourth move and now the c3 move white is just asking for trouble here he is already behind in development he has some permanent weaknesses in his position i don't feel like it's going too well for him but let's see i can also consider trying to castle long but you know, you should. They say that you should castle generally to decide um, in which you are like uh, to wear it fastest to to castle. So here I can castle in one move, and it would take me a lot of moves to castle long. So that's why I prefer to castle short. So now, thanks to his move c3, I might have uh, ideas connected to the move queen to d3 it is actually looks to me like a very annoying move for uh, for white to face because the queen on d3 blocks the pawn on d2 and that way i am disturbing his bishop c1 development and also i uh, prevent him from castling so if he's not too careful i think i will do it but he played d3 
maybe with the idea not to allow me to put my queen there maybe I should have put it there one move ago but anyway let's see so I want to continue my development so I'm thinking rook e8 is a very sensible move just putting the rook behind the pawn supporting it and then I have some very nice maneuver in mind so I think I will play it rook e8 now I'm vacating this square for the knight on b8 so my idea is to play something like knight e7, knight f8, maybe knight g6 bishop g5 another move without developing any queens, any kingside piece so he's playing extremely provocatively or provocative so um, I think I'll just go with my plan of 97 but finally at least he developed a piece that's already good news for him Okay, let's play h6. Yeah, now his bishop must go either to h4 or to e3. Of course, he can also take on f6, but to me it looks very bad to give up this bishop so easily. Yeah, he played bishop e3, but now I think I have a very nice continuation. I just take, and my next move is knight c5. So suddenly I have two attacking pieces on this pawn on d3, and this pawn just drops. Yeah, he played knight e4, but this is already a bit desperate. I can just take on d3 now with the knight. I can also take on e4 and then check on h4. Also looks tempting. Let's see w which one is the more, let's say, satisfying. looks like taking on d3 it's the most obvious move and a move I should play without even thinking too much but somehow I I feel like playing for the attack here playing for the initiative maybe taking on e4 and giving a check on h4 it's a good idea in this sense but it's slightly risky though because if I don't get my attack going I might be left with not too much to speak about. Okay, let's take on d3, how bad could it be? Just taking a pawn with a check. King f1 and now... Okay, so many good options. I could just take another pawn on b2. And it's a quite a safe pawn to take in my opinion. I can also take on e4, then check on f6, just to play for a complete domination. Everything looks terrific. Let it, let's try to play for the attack, let's develop pieces. I play bishop e6, threatening bishop c4. Anyway when given the chance I mo most of the time I prefer to go for the initiative rather than grabbing a pawn that's why I slightly prefer the move bishop e6 now this wow g5 wow that's a horrible move <laughs> I'm sorry Mr. Daniello but this is a very bad move now I can do practically whatever whatever I like, but I will just take his knight. And now after he takes my knight on e4, 
Okay, I could do. I could do anything. I could play bishop c4. I can take on b2, which I probably, I will probably will do it in this at this point. I would just take his pawn on b2. And now I'm two pawns up. Let me play this move. Now I'm threatening knight takes e3. And a double attack on the king and the queen. And if this is not enough, his pawn on g5 is hanging. So I just want to take him on the next move. So I think white is essentially lost here. But he was lost, I think, or long ago when he played all of those strange moves in the opening. So I think I will let him figure out how to get away from his troubles. But I, I really think it's way too late for him. Now it's three pawns up and I still have the attack going. I'm threatening queen takes e3. And if the queen protects this pawn, I might also just play rook a to d8 on the next move with the idea to penetrate to the d2 square, which would be a very nasty threat. So I'm really wondering if white has anything <laughs> that that would uh, continue the game. Instead of him I would resign here, probably. Queen c1, yeah, let me just play rook d8. It's kind of nice to play a move like rook to d8 because not only I'm threatening all kinds of stuff on the d file, I just finished my development of pieces. Yeah, now after bishop d3, I can win instantly with queen g2 check, just winning the rook. Yeah, perhaps it's the simplest win here. I don't, I don't even need to think about it. All of his pieces are dropping now, one by another. On the next move I can choose whether I want to take the rook or his bishop. I think I'll take the bishop. Just because the rook is not running away and I'm keep me keeping my attack. So yeah, he resigned. I think it was a good time to resign after uh, so many sufferings. So this game was rather easy but I think uh, this was a good example of why you should not violate uh, the principles of the openings so badly like he did in this game so all of those moves g4 and then e4 instead of developing pieces it's really backfired to him the fact that he played so um, so much in in contrast to the chess wisdom let's say and then after knight c5, I think at this point he's already lost with his double attack on the pawn. And the main point is that if he plays d4, I can take the pawn on d4. And then the rook is open up against the king. So I can he cannot take me back. So yeah, this was quite an easy game. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.